the, the word unprecedented is used a lot, but that 2017 was far different. Uh, our whole community was on our heels. Um, and um, whereas uh, Chris, I, I see you on my screen and I wanna thank you for leading us from a place where I believe we, uh, we, we adequately did what you talked about in some of those early days of you taking this job was uh, turning us from Sonoma strong to Sonoma ready. You know, I mean, even though we've had those fires come back in and they've smacked us in the face again and again, uh, we haven't seen the same kind of conflagrations because you and your office have been so good with the money that we put in, not just to this kind of PG&E funds, but discretionary dollars into emergency management, into upstaffing, you all doing the testing and warning, going out and doing this work in the community. And, uh, and I really feel we are Sonoma ready now. Um, and now we're at the point to say Sonoma, stay, Sonoma safe, you know, Sonoma strong, Sonoma ready to Sonoma safe. And so um, both, I, I don't wanna go too far. I wanna hear from my colleagues more than anything on the infrastructure portion, uh, Chair Gorn, um, because I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very supportive of both the generational investment side of things. I think the amount of that really depends on, I, I wanna see where our colleagues stand on that. I don't want this to be divisive as it was initially, um, but I do appreciate, uh, you know, Director Hubert's bringing back the identification of the damage areas. Um, I also support the, uh, you know, the, I remember Supervisor Rabbit talked about reevaluating the FEMA denial in that process with Johannes and Chris doing that formally and really getting a look, um, not delaying, but also not spending something on something that we still want to get them to pay for, right? I mean, let's remind ourselves that in certain situations, even though they don't like to say it, FEMA is, um, we, we are filing claims with uh, an, a public infrastructure insurance company. Um, they don't like to say that, but in this case, uh, that's what we're, we're trying to get. So um, my support is there for the infrastructure side. Veg management, I think, is, 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 is a fun and interesting um, challenge and opportunity. What do they call it? Proportunity? Um, because how do we spend the money to uh, immediately lower risk now? And then how do we um, also uh, build up robust programs in the future? And so a couple specifics that I would love some, some discussion from us and staff on is, um, number one is, is that I am very supportive of the work of Cooperative Extension in Sonoma Water um, uh, on that effort. I know that the uh, Good Fire Alliance, uh, there's a lot that, um, that I, I was hoping uh, maybe Stephanie could uh, talk a little bit about what's been achieved this year um, with Sasha and with your work and um, not just the need for this money to do more marketing and more program outreach and more other stuff. But Stephanie, one of the things that you and I talked about was if this money was going to go to UCCE and others is how it really had a return on investment um, because it's not just staffing at this point. I mean, we need to be able to, at the end of the year, say how many acres, uh, you know, uh, treated, uh, what are the agreements for O&M on the back end of property owners? And so I just wanted you to talk a little bit about how, um, how, how this is not just $1.6 million in outreach. Right. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to, to do that if I can now, if that's all right. Yes, part of the, the 600,000 that UC is asking for is part of outreach and it is also staffing and the staffing would work with landowners for all the practices. So prescribed grazing with the uh, match.graze, they prescribed fire with the Good Fire Alliance and fire forward with Sasha Berlin and the Audubon Canyon Ranch. And so absolutely in working with Circuit Rider, it's training more workforce to help with fires. It's working with Cal Fires. It's, it's working with Marshall Thurberville and, and his crew as far as developing. Um, so part of the outreach and uh, assessing and helping people where to burn, what to burn, when to burn and walking them through, it would be increasing the ability to do prescribed fire in all the areas in the county that makes sense. Absolutely. I know you have hazard maps and you've done an excellent job on creating lists already of landowners who want to do this work. And so there's also this other side about how do we, how, how do we just create the enabling conditions for those projects because as you know they can be so difficult and you can't do them without risk right you know uh um so um that's the reason we're in the situation that we are so i look forward to uh, seeing how we deploy and i appreciate your work and this proposal um i'm gonna i, I want to just say a couple other things uh for the other side i am supportive of um of, of the of the work uh the contract going forward to have the expert analysis so number one is I, 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 think, I think it would be good to have the appropriate staff come and just, this is a presentation in a very 
media item, but there's been 30 meetings and I would love for staff to come back after this meeting and talk with different board members. Um, I know, especially I, I, this has to go countywide, but veg management, you know, um, I think, you know, as we've talked about 85% of it is in districts four and five and hundred, almost hundred percent, if you include district one um, in the forested land. So what I mean by that is, is that, um, yes, like some of the things that we have to look at is yes, in addition to um, us evaluating and being program managers, I am going to be very strong about us doing what FEMA does, which is publishing a notice of intent for people to send us. Now, I don't think we need to jump into RFPs, but I want to see what our fire districts jointly with our COPE teams our block captains and others would propose to us formally as partnerships. Reason I say this is, is that, you know, one idea of veg management that I've talked with a lot of staff and others about is imagine a world where uh, what we could do is take maybe 10 million of this money and we go into communities that have community wildfire protection plans, CWPPs, and uh, in a region. And we say, here's a match. We will put 500,000, a million dollars on the table if you will create a district, an enhanced risk reduction district to manage that vegetation once with a plan, once we have helped you take down the initial two or three years, right? So the key here is, is that how do we get those programs, those incentives on the table so we don't just spend our own money? I mean, I know places and people in uh, areas of Mill Creek, Palmer Creek, uh, Mark West Springs Road, others um, who are looking at how they own their own private land, the Sonoma County, uh, 95 plus percent is privately owned. So I think, I think we need to consider how we not just consult and get ideas and run round, round tables and input, but how we get those ideas proposed to us. If we do it like a notice of intent, I could, we could have two or three uh, districts send us stuff and say their ideas and we could evaluate them and it doesn't have to be an RFP that we fund right away, but it might empower our decision making. Um, so other thing is, is that I'd really like, I think the other part of this money that needs to be to, I'm always thinking about how we spend money on immediate veg management over the next year, two years, three years, uh, enhanced shipper programs like you all, Conservation Corps folks, yes, but on the back end, who owns the O&M side? And that's where we need to not just have uh, districts that risk reduction districts that manage their own, but we also have to empower code enforcement staff to get out there and to have a pot of money that is for potential work on absentee landowners or uncompliant landowners and slap liens on their properties. Uh, we have, we have, we, we have, uh, you know, chapter 13A, uh, we added additional large properties uh, this last round in small areas like Fitch Mountain, Camp Meeker and others, you know, communities continue to rightfully complain about uh, people who will not clean up their properties. And so now that we've enhanced that, I think some of that money has to go into enhanced code enforcement and so that we have basically the carrot and the stick on both sides of it. So I'm gonna stop there. Those are ideas that I'd love to see chewed on and evaluated over the course of the, the coming months. And, um, and then also, you know, just as an aside, uh, uh, Cheryl, Chris, others, is, is that one thing a lot of us have talked about is how do we, is it this money or is it some of the transportation and public works money that we take back into those burn scars and we evaluate the dozer lines that were cut in 17, 19 and 20 and we go make them into fire breaks, uh, fire access roads and other things. I mean, there was, you, you know how hard it would be under environmental planning to go out and do dozer lines in the mountains well, before they all go away, we need to protect the ones that are sustainable in those areas. And that could be through easements. It could be through just general agreements with landowners that we're going to come and manage it on the front end and they have to do the O&M um, or they have a right to manage it with dozer lines. Um, but but uh, those are some initial thoughts and look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, members of the board. County Administrator Bratton and County Council Pittman. I'm Crystal Carey Harrow, Deputy County Administrator, um, and I'll be presenting along with my county colleagues, um, which includes Stephanie Larson at UCCE, Grant Davis from Sonoma Water, Johannes Huvertz from Transportation and Public Works, Chris Godley of the Department of Emergency Management, and Yvonne Shu from the County's Administrator's Office, along with one guest, 
from um, uh, Berkeley Law, um, Ethan Elkind. Um, so if I'm gonna move on to this first slide. Um, so if I've just included here a brief summary of your board's discussions since the settlement was confirmed and finalized in June of this year. As a reminder of the public, the total settlement to county entities was $149.3 million. Uh, on August 11th, your board received a background information on the fiscal impacts and damages. On September 11th, as part of the budget hearings this year, uh, your board allocated $26.8 million um, and uh, including res restoring reserve funds used in the 2017 fires. And on October 6th, uh, staff provided a summary of the community feedback received on how to allocate the funds and your board approved $10 million for the Renewable Enterprise District to support housing development, uh, as well as $25 million for vegetation management. And the remaining balance you see uh, simply shows how much um, is remaining and that your board may consider allocating. Okay. So just quickly, as after the fire season we've had this year and since 2017, and the impacts and devastation experienced by our community, some more critically than others. We know all too well that wildfires will continue to threaten life and property in Sonoma County. More and strategic mitigation are needed. And the figures you see here in the box give an indication of the scope, scale, and cost of the vegetation management needed, far beyond current resource capacity. Unsurprisingly, there is a high sense of community urgency to complete near-term projects to implement a variety of mitigation strategies before the next fire season. In this context, and since your board's discussion on October 6th, county and community partners have been putting their energies to consider this question here, and that is, how do we leverage the $25 million to make the most of funds and make strategic decisions for long-term benefits? CAO Administrative Analyst Yvonne Shu has been leading, leading many of these discussions and I'll turn to her now to present some of the material included in the board item summary. Good afternoon, Chair Gorin and members of the board. I'm Yvonne Shu, analyst in the County Administrator's Office. Over the past six weeks, staff held over 30 meetings with a variety of community and county stakeholders. Among the neighborhood groups, outreach, education, and general guidance on vegetation management was a common theme. Organizations such as the Conservation Corps North Bay and Santa Rosa Junior College are helping to develop a future workforce who can meet the growing demand for vegetation management services in the county through vocational and workforce development programs. The overriding theme among the non-governmental agencies and county departments and agencies, and even some community members, was the need to have a centralized vegetation management function. This lead would provide central coordination outreach and education, and leadership of vegetation management initiatives across departments, agencies, and in coordination with community partners, neighboring counties, and provide a long-term vision for funding and planning of vegetation management. Next slide, please. A Community Wildlife Protection Plan, or CWPP, describes wildfire hazards and mitigation measures for a community, whether that community is a county or a local neighborhood. With funding from the Federal Emergency Management Agency's Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, Permit Sonoma's Fire Prevention Division is currently updating the county's CWPP, which will include increased data about fuels and mitigation strategies. The county CWPP contains a hazard reduction priority list that is intended to be part of a ranking system to assess risk reduction projects for the wildland urban interface. And in the conversations with community and county departments and agencies over the past month, there was consensus that these priorities should help guide decisions related to the vegetation management allocation. Next slide, please. Vegetation grows back, even though funding may not, and a sustainable funding model is needed for long-term planning. Both Marin and Lake counties recently established joint powers authorities to organize around wildfire mitigation, with Marin's model relying on a recently passed 10-year parcel tax 
and Lake County's model looking toward grants, donations, and potential alliances to fund their activity. Sonoma County had an ordinance on the March 2020 ballot to establish a fire sales tax measure, which narrowly lost. The county is preparing to place another sales tax measure on the November 2021 ballot. The county's permit Sonoma department received a $6.8 million grant from FEMA's hazard mitigation grant program for a home hardening and defensible space program. Under the grant program, defensible space inspections will occur in designated areas of the county, and these homeowners can later receive financial assistance to make needed improvements. As well, Permit Sonoma recently submitted an application to FEMA's Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities, or BRIC, grant program for the maximum project amount of $50 million. The goal of the BRIC grant is to apply a variety of risk reduction strategies to one to three large project areas, deploying strategies at the scale of thousands of acres. Should the county be awarded the grant, the local match requirement would be $12.5 million. The pg and &E allocation is a significant amount of money that ideally should be leveraged to, to sustain long-term vegetation management, despite the many immediate needs to which it could be applied. Staff initially recommends enlisting feedback from external leaders who can provide long-term policy guidance for vegetation management prior to making specific allocations from the $25 million as well as proceeding with the outreach, support, and expansion of the UC Cooperative Extension and Sonoma Water Fuel Mapper Tool. Staff recommends that these two actions be funded through additional PG&E money so that the full 25 million is available for consideration. Now I'd like to hand the presentation over to Dr. Stephanie Larson of UC Cooperative Extension, who will speak to the Fuels Map Decision Support Tool. Thank you, Yvonne, and thank you, Board of Supervisors. It's my pleasure to, to represent uh, Sonoma Water and UC Cooperative Extension and walking you through what we think is needed to address fire um, reduction and vegetation management. We'd like to see a coordinated regional approach to vegetation management of fire fuels and that would protect local communities, ecosystem services, and infrastructures from wildfires. Next slide, please. So what we're looking at is using science to optimize vegetation management dollars. So we are proposing a, to a sophisticated suite of tools to help focus on vegetation management. So tool number one is a transparent science-based path to prioritize parts of landscape according to wind, topography, fuels, and future vegetation growth. So this landscape level decision support would prioritize locations for vegetation treatment actions and analyze future benefits of proposed treatments. The component would evaluate high fire risk against uh, built roads, uh, the WUIs, density, water supply systems, telecommunications, and natural assets like streams, habitats, and sensitive species. The tool, one, tool two is what is I have been working on on the on-the-ground planning implementation. This is at a parcel level and working directly with landowners to help them assess the vegetation management, bringing science to help their decisions on which practices to implement and where. Now, the benefits of these approach, it supports the CWPP content and implementation. It's transparent. It's defensible metho um, methodology for distributing public dollars. It tracks vegetation management pro projects and updates priorities accordingly. It supports planners from a landscape to a site specific direction and provides support to landowners to implement on the ground projects. Next slide. So kind of looking at these from a purpose, like I said, the landscape level it identifies locations within watersheds, supervisor districts for vegetation management provide maximum fire re re risk reduction for particular uh, priorities. The, the tool that I'm looking at, the decision support tool, helps landowners determine the appropriate locations, techniques, cost, works with the landowners to help them with cost share and to carry out fuel reduction work. The benefits, ability to evaluate vegetation management treatments, um, location, cost, enable science-based justifiable decision-making process for allocating resources for the greatest benefit by land managers. 
from the benefit from a parcel level, it's it puts the decisions in the landowner's hands to better understand what types of vegetation are on their process, their parcels. We're using the um, fire, uh, five uh, the five meter parcel fuel data that has been developed uh, through Pepperwood's work and uh, Mark Tuckman's company, and it helps them to prioritize and mitigate strategies for each one, and they receive guidance on next steps. So how do I get money on this? The status is um, right now the, the tool one is only uh, conceptual, it's not funded. From the status of the UCCE tool piloting with Pepperwood, um, we are ready to release the pilots. I have just gotten a few folks around the Lake Sonoma area where we're doing the initial pilot. They're interested, they're offering up their parcels for us to do, and we'd like to do a, an expansion of this um, into 2021. And with the help of Pepperwood's funding, we're able to expand the tool that UC developed to cover the entire county. So every parcel greater than two acres will be able to be evaluated with this tool. So the ask from Sonoma Water is $1 million to implement this. There will be the lead. I'm asking for an additional 600,000 for three years because it's gonna take a lot of outreach, a lot of work with the landowners. And also what we're planning to do is work with groups like Circuit Riders and the Santa Rosa Junior College so that we can look at this through a, uh, an equity lens as well and training their crews that work with Circuit Riders and educating them through the Junior College to provide this additional workforce from the idea that we work with landowners, they decide they need certain practices and now we've increased the workforce to provide that work for them. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Up next, I'd like to introduce Ethan Elkind from the Berkeley Law Center for Law, Energy and the Environment, who is here to present the second of staff's initial vegetation management allocation recommendations for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Crystal. And uh, thank you, members of the board. So yes, my name is Ethan Elkind. I direct the climate program at Berkeley Law's Center for Law, Energy, and the Environment. And we do a host of different convenings on topics related to climate change, energy, uh, water, oceans, land use, as you can see. And you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So I just want to touch on three points very quickly. I know we're trying to move through this agenda item. So first, I just want to talk about the goal of what our uh, policy planning support would involve. And, and it's basically to develop an action plan to help leverage these settlement funds for long-term landscape uh, and climate resilience, improving the biodiversity, ecosystem services, but figuring out how this is not just a one-time shot of funds, but can actually be leveraged for ongoing long-term uh, resilience. Secondly, I just wanna talk about the, the process that we would propose to use for this. And that is, at expert stakeholder outreach and convenings. And we've been doing this for over a decade now where we pull in people who have expertise, in this case in finance, in landscape management, key stakeholders from throughout the community. I know that there's been a number of reports that have already been written with different recommendations and we can incorporate many of those to build on that work and leverage the opportunity here, not only with these funds, but also with a new federal administration coming in that we would assume would have uh, potentially some new funding sources that could support some of this work. Uh, we, doing that focused outreach, and we've used to do this in person, of course, now we'll pivot to Zoom and we've been able to do that with some success. Uh, using that expert outreach, we'll package all of that into a report that would have some detailed recommendations, some immediate near-term steps that can be taken, potentially some long-term steps. And we would, if necessary, do some additional law and policy research on some of the recommendations that may, may require that. And then lastly, I'll just point out some examples of past work that we've done on, on related topics. So we had worked with folks during the uh, Gavin Newsom transition period uh, to put together some recommendations specifically on wildfire resilience uh, that the governor ended up acting upon. But that was a similar type of format where we pulled in experts from the academic community, uh, from some of the major landowners, uh, folks in local and, and state policy, to help inform some of those recommendations. Uh, we also just recently concluded some work for the governor's office of planning and research, looking at how to finance carbon sequestration on natural and working lands. And that report is not final. We just concluded that meeting a couple of weeks ago, but uh, we think some of the experts that we talked to for that discussion and some of the recommendations may be applicable uh, as well in Sonoma County. So uh, with that, I will uh, conclude, but uh, happy to answer any questions about it and just keeping in mind that uh, we wanna keep this brief. So I'll, I'll adjourn for there and uh, 
as, if there's any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. Uh, now moving on to the infrastructure resiliency portion of the presentation, handing it over to Johannes Huertz. Good afternoon, board and um, uh, chair, chairwoman and members of the board, Johannes. After October 6, we, the board directed us to come up with a list of projects of what we had submitted to FEMA for reimbursement. Um, we, we call that tier one. And tier one are projects that, are, uh, in, that were impacted by the pr uh, private property debris removal uh, process. Um, there are 32 segments, about 21.44 millions. And those were the worst segments that needed uh, payment uh, repairs after um, the debris removal. Um, we also have, next slide please. Tier two, which were projects that were also damaged by the debris removal process and fire suppression efforts as well. Um, the total estimated damages at one point was over $120 million. Um, working with Cal, Fire, uh, Cal OES, we, uh, we reduced the treatment on those segments and we took it down to 80 million at one point and then ultimately to the $21.44 million. Um, after uh, our meeting with the board, uh, we had a selection of 13.44 and this, this segments were not included on tier one because we only included on tier one what was admitted to FEMA, which was the worst of the worst. Tier one, uh, it's similar damage plus other damages around uh, the, the landfill, for example, a lot of damage near the Larkville Wiki Up area. Um, and that's what tier one is. Next slide, please. Um, tier two projects uh, came out after a phrase coined by Supervisor Rabbit last time we had a meeting that he called them generational projects. Uh, we were tasked with defining what a generational project would be, and we have some criteria for that. Uh, the useful life of the project is uh, more than 15 years or more. Uh, they strengthen the existing infrastructure in areas where there's physical or geometric constraints. Uh, they reduce or mitigate the risk of a disaster, promote disaster preparedness countywide, and contribute to leverage funds for a bigger resilient project overall promoting the safety and the welfare of the public. Um, the proposal from the department is we have some sample projects for you on the agenda item um, that we could move, some of the projects we could start moving immediately, but we recommend that we meet with the board like we do when we select the payment preservation projects and we go over uh, projects uh, to include when we come back to the board. Next slide, please. Tier three projects are uh, investments opportunities. We had a, an we have an opportunity to buy uh, $3.9 million worth of undergrounding credits, utility credits from uh, the county of Amador for 50% of the cost. Uh, we have a need to underground utilities within the county. Uh, Rule 28 projects are really hard to come by. They take a long time to, to deliver. We are working on one in Freestone and they help um, with fire risk and high fire risk areas underground in the utilities. Next slide, please. Tier, the next project under tier three is an opportunity to uh, enhance communications with transportation and public works. After our last fire, uh, we have, you know, we've been uh, working with uh, first responders and when we're in the field, um, when we were working in St. Helena or in the fifth district, when we're dealing with the LNU fire, it became really, really important to have communications. We would, we couldn't communicate with first responders and we were taking risks that essentially we shouldn't have. And I think we need, it's a great opportunity to have uh, the interoperability with first responders, with residents uh, to communicate. Really important for the department uh, to be safe when we're responding to disasters. Next slide, please. I will let uh, DEM comment on this one, Crystal. Good afternoon, board. Christopher Godley, Director of Emergency Management. Briefly, DEM is proposing to construct a network of five facilities, one in each supervisorial district for community resilience centers. Steel building construction, relatively low cost. 
we're looking at a $3.25 million project total and the cost share for the federal grant for which we've applied for these funding uh, would leave a county cost of $812,000. Each of these facilities would serve multiple roles for disaster response and especially preparedness, including storage of critical disaster supplies close by each of the communities, as well as the ability to support operations, incident management, and ongoing logistics resource support for our major incidents. And then finally, these would be energy resilience centers that would allow us to both generate and store electrical energy uh, to support local community needs as well as county operations as we move more and more into the use of electrical vehicles. Uh, we believe this is a simple and expensive uh, project that will allow us to extend preparedness mission well into our communities and provide a long-term resource for the county for the next 40 to 60 years. Just getting to the slides, so repeating the recommended actions in the infrastructure item today, um, approving the tier one. Let me, I guess I don't need to read those. You have it in the item. I know we're pressed for time. Um, so this is just a couple of final slides. This slide just to show if a recommended actions approved today are approved, that the remaining balance of the PGD settlement funds would be 26.76 million. Um, and then just hitting on to the next steps um, with your board's direction, we would move um, to bring back that policy planning report to your board in March of next year. Um, and at that point, potentially, um, you, you could consider some of the leading ideas and projects that are included in the summary. Um, and on the infrastructure piece, we would um, bring back an item so that your board could receive an update on Tier 1 FEMA reimbursement claim status in and uh, receive a list of potential Tier 2 road generational projects for consideration in May uh, and work with stakeholders to select Road 20A program projects in the time frame for October of next year. Um, that concludes my presentation um, with staff and um, Chairwoman Gorman, many, many of your department heads are uh, available on the panel to answer questions.